everyone. Oh, my voice is squeaking. Don't mind me. Just getting that authentic, squeaky-voiced high school kind of loathing experience. Definitely not because I haven't recorded too much today. Um, welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing while we're here. So I'm still exploring the Black Forest and the White Forest. I uh, ground up off screen just to get through all of these guys because there's a lot of them. All right. You invite them to join the Black Parade. Oh, boy. Uh, the Black Parade of monsters you've stabbed for this many damage. All right. You're fighting a Biclops. Oh, man. You finally managed to push past all the stoners milling around the poppy field and make it to the woods at the other side of the clearing. As the narcotic haze begins to lift from your mind, leaving with a pounding headache, you hope it isn't much farther than the White Citadel. You could go for about 30 sliders right about now. And then it turns out you aren't the only one here who's hungry, and that pounding noise isn't coming from your head. A massive ogre stomps up to you with saliva dripping from his lips, and an angry red light in his <gasps> two eyes. You get the jump on him. But Dave's got a pound, and I got two inoculars. <laughs> Monsters will be less attracted to you. Plus five to monster level. This is a, like a little telescope, except there's two of them together. I suppose you look. I guess you're supposed to look through both of them at the same time somehow. Weird. They should help you scout out the area to avoid monsters, but watch out. No one likes a peeping Tom. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, wow. Okay. Life ain't nothing but witches and mummies. You find a narrow path, more of an animal trail, really, leading away from where you fought the Biclops and deeper into the woods. It twists and turns, and the forest gets darker as you go. The trees become gnarled, wizened, almost skeletal things, reaching towards you with claw-like branches and snagging your clothes as you brush past them. Well, my clothes are made of oil right now, so there's that. I've got some pigs. Why do I have that? All the familiars have been turned into baby piggies. They're absolutely adorable. They're also useless. What? Oops. You leave your familiar to play in the mud for... Ah, dang it. All right. Ah. All right. All right, all right, all right. White Citadel Quest. Bro to the White Citadel. Okay. You find a narrow path, more of an animal trail, really. Trees become narrow and wizened. At this point, discovering a witch hut is inevitable, and you find yourself hoping it's a gingerbread one, because you could go for some gingerbread. Or some of those cheesy puff corn things. What are the odds a witch might build her house out of cheesy puff corn snacks, you wonder? Well, this puppies are really sticking with you. Eventually, you find the hut. Sadly, it is a regular old wooden shack, and not made by any sort of snacks. Made of any sort of snacks. The trees surrounding are thick with cobwebs. Hang down from which hang dozens of man-sized cocoons. Many of them are twitching as though the occupants are struggling to free themselves. So that sobers you up pretty quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hesitantly, you approach the house, but before you reach the porch, the witch sticks her head out of the window and jeers at you. Aha, uh -huh, another intruder, have we? More food for my pet. Hey now, you say, raising your hands. I just need direction to the White Citadel. Not looking for any trouble. Not looking for any trouble. <laughs> you found it all the same, my little trespasser. Oh, if I had read the whole thing, I would have found out the explanation for some pigs. Great. She pulls out a wand and launches a fat pink beam at you. You throw yourself to the ground in time to dodge it, but your familiar is not so lucky and has turned into an adorable baby piggy. And in case you're wondering, some sort of feedback loop caused by the extra-dimensional properties of your familiar Cotorarium causes a chain reaction that turns all your other familiars into adorable baby piggies as well. Adorable baby piggies. Still cackling, the witch slams, the wooden shutters close, and you hear a loud click as she latches them. You look at your familiar, who blinks back at you with big round eyes and makes an oink sound. Man, what is it with witches anyway, you sigh. You leave your, your familiar to play in the mud for a bit as you inspect the witch's hut. All right, I'm here. Looks like a typical rundown shack, but as is generally the case with witches are involved, there's more here than meets the eye. The wooden walls are gray and splintery. The shingles are curling and uneven, but apart from the little windows in the front door, 
and the edges of the window shutters. There's no gaps in the construction that let light through. It's a, cons- a solidly constructed house. The front door is, of course, locked. A chill breeze rustles the surrounding cobwebs as you decide what to do next. You could break down the front door, but a directed assault seems unwise. Maybe if you freed the people caught in these spider cocoons, they could help somehow. Of course, it's just as likely as they'd been driven crazy. It's just as likely that they'd been driven crazy by the experience and attack you. Let's cut down one. You carefully cut open one of the wriggling cocoons, and a knob goblin alchemist stumbles out. From what you can tell, he was collecting magic roots and was forced to eat them to keep from starving while cocooned. You can tell this because his pupils are so dilated you can't see the whites. Also, he's gibbering incoherently while attacking you. Not that these guys are particularly coherent anyway, so then you fight. A knob goblin alchemist. But Deus rolls around contentedly in a mud puddle. Does that happen every time? You carefully cut open one of the wriggling cocoons, releasing a knight in white satin. One might expect a knight dressed that way to be a good guy who wouldn't attack anyone who is attempting to rescue him, but in this case, that expectation would be incorrect. Perhaps he's attempting to curry favor with a giant spider that imprisoned him by leaping to its defense, despite the fact that a sad spider is able to defend itself. It's possible he's just insane. Just what the truth is, I can't say anymore. A knight in white satin. We already fought one of these guys. Cool. Well, let's kick in the front door. You march up to the front door and pause to consider what you're about to do. Kick in a witch's front door, a witch that knows you're out here and is certain to be ready for you, and a witch that recently turned off your familiars, all of your familiars, into little piggies. It doesn't sound like the best fan. <laughs> it doesn't sound like the best plan you've ever had, is what I'm saying. Well, screw it. Kick in the front door. Roar! You shout, and although the door stays solidly closed, the door frame shakes with the force of your kick. Actually, the whole house shakes uh, appears to be shaking. <laughs> the witch shouts from inside. You've gone and done it now. Destroy them, my pretty pet. You step back off the now violently shaking porch and fall backward onto the ground. The house is unexpectedly lifted up by about a foot and has continued to rise. Oh, boy. Your familiar squeals and tries to hide behind you. Aw, oh, damn it. You should have known. If a witch's house is in the gingerbread type, it's probably the type that has chicken legs, like Baba Yaga's hut. Ooh, except this one has spider legs. Long, hairy, chitinous, sharply pointed spider legs. You're fighting a spider-legged witch's hut. That's really cool. Oh, that's cool. Of all the various screw-ups you've inflicted on yourself during your adventuring career, attempting a frontal assault on a witch's hut, which subsequently turned out to be some kind of horrible spider monster, may be the worst. And very probably, the last. The witch peers out of the window and cackles with glee. Kill him! Kill him dead, my beautiful, horrible house! <laughs> As the house scuttles toward you, you briefly wish you were friends with the other old woman who lives in a giant shoe. Well, let's clubfoot. Stun resisted. Foot stopped hurting. It tries to spear you with a spider leg, but apparently that's one of those things a spider can't do. Alright, well, let's lunge through a smack. Oh. Right, I'm uh, over-leveled, aren't I? You get a giant spider leg. Bodeus makes little grunty noises while snuffling around looking for truffles. You lunge with all your might, thrust with all your worth, and smack with all your black sword. Cool. You're fighting an extremely annoyed witch. This witch is more ticked than wicked, and I suppose that's understandable, considering you've just killed her house. Why do witches always feel the need to live in weird things? If they're not being killed by adventurers, they get infested with ants. Which homeowner insurance must be through the roof, metaphorically speaking? I'll get you, my pretty, she shrieks, waving her wand in the air. And all of your little piggies, too. Well, club. All right, cool. Thrust. With the witch taken care of, you pick up your wand and flip a little switch on the side of it from pig to regular. You then turn all of your familiars back to normal and put the wand in your pack. After all, you never know when a wand that turns dudes into pigs might come in handy. Be a pretty good party trick and nothing else. We got a wand of pigification. Pigification. All right. Eventually, the dim forest trail leads to the side of a large rocky hill that sticks out of the woods like a stunted mountain, struggling from the rack of sunlight. Lack of sunlight. Your stomach churns as you contemplate being forced to climb over it, or go who knows how far out of your way around it. Fortunately, on closer inspection, you discover a cave entrance. With a bit of luck, it might lead straight through. You light a torch and investigate cautiously. The tunnel is remarkably straightforward. It twists and turns a bit, but it doesn't branch, and the footing is solid. 
Eventually, you come to a large chamber, lit by sunlight streaming in through fissures in the rocky ceiling. The sight is astonishing. Not the sunlight itself, though it's been a while since you saw any, but what it illuminates. A room full of treasure chests of every size and description. So many, you can't even count them. It's basically an adventurous wet dream. Let's investigate them. There are too many treasure chests to describe all of them, but the closest to hand are a tiny walnut chest with engraved steel fittings, a medium ivory chest with shiny gold fittings, and a small sandalwood chest with vintage iron fittings. One of them is certainly trapped, but your meat, your adventure senses tingle. One of them is certainly trapped, but your meat radar is way louder than your adventurer senses. Hmm. Let's open the first one. 40 meat. Yippee. Let's open the third one. 100 meat. Let's spring the trap. Whoa, you can just keep going. Let's leave it. You step away from the chest and inspect the passageway ahead. Unlike the tunnel you took to get here, this appears to be filled with maze-like branching paths. You'll never find your way back here if you leave. Butting your lip, you turn to look back at the chest. So many of them left to be open. You've found 400 meat so far. They're just so shiny. Imagine how much more meat there is in this room. Well. Hmm. Out of the White Citadel. Let's just see here. I'm just curious. No whammies. Yep. Okay. That's what I. That's what I wanted to find out. Losing all the meat that I'd gotten so far, I definitely, definitely don't want to lose all this. With a sigh, you put the four thousand meat in your meat pouch and set off down the tunnel. Again, four thousand meat. That's a lot of meat, man. I'm good with that. The tunnels twist and turn in labyrinthine fashion, and you soon find yourself hopelessly lost. Your torch gutters and dies, leaving you in darkness, shuffling carefully down the tunnel with one hand trailing the wall. Eventually, you emerge blinking into daylight. All right. Down a steep and rocky but climbable hill, and perhaps a mile up the road, you spot the object of your quest, the White Citadel. Sunlight gleams on its white plastered concrete walls and buttresses, and it shimmers almost like a mirage on the reflected heat of its asphalt parking lot. Those weird little hamburgers are so close you can practically taste them already. It won't be easy, of course, as you reflect you pick as you reflect as you pick your way cautiously down the hill and then start along the road. There's always one final trial. As the forest parts and the white citadel comes into view, you steal your nerves what lies ahead. Hopefully it's not too anticlimactic, considering how it's been built up now. Okay. You're fighting Elpizio. And Chris Chrysiptis? I mean, I know it's supposed to be Charybdis. Alright, well, interesting. As you approach the end of the road to the White Citadel, a mighty roar shakes the forest. You barely have time to ready your weapon before a gigantic hydra-like monster storms out of the trees. Its many long necks writhing and crooning, writhing and splitting along the huge bulk of its scaly body. You prepare to attack the hideous creature, but are interrupted by a loud crooning howl behind you as a second monster appears on the opposite side of the road. This one thinner and snake-like, but with several wailing fanged mouths. You're caught between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. Well, let's club foot him. All right, we stunned him. Oh, right. I keep remember. I keep forgetting that I'm actually under leveled for this quest, but only this one. All the other ones are my level. With the monsters defeated, you've reached the end of the road, and not in a grim memento mori sense, but in a literal sense. The road to the White Citadel literally runs directly there and stops at the parking lot. Could have saved a hell of a lot of time if you'd listened to those two guys in sunglasses way back at the beginning of all this. Oh well, like the fella said, in the end, the universe tends to unfold as it should. Let's go back to the distant woods, and to the White Citadel. Oh hey, you're Dusky Alfred, right? Here's a carry-out order. That'll be thrown to meat. White Citadel Satisfaction Satchel. And then we have all these. Well, I'm curious, actually. Hmm. I kind of want to do a... Uh... Okay, White Citadel quest. So what do all these do? I'm just curious, because I actually can't eat right now. White Citadel Burger. Looks greasy and delicious. Mostly greasy. Oh, it was originally literally called the White Castle. That's funny. 
Two minus X adventures and fullness. You can use it for a grease gun. Okay. The maximum possible adventures increases when you eat more burgers. You gain at most three adventures, with the ceiling slowly lifting the four adventures all the way up to nine. Interesting. Grease gun. That's funny. Oh, that's really gross also. <laughs> Man, I'm just reading these. You eat the white citadel fries. They only come in one size and only come in one flavor. Delicious. I uh, should remember to talk, but don't mind me. Theoretically edible, but it'd be more fun to throw them at stuff than to eat them. I've never really had a good onion ring. I've been to like a bunch of different item item a bunch of different restaurants and then these are just colas cool i don't know why i opened that this is the lunch you promised that guy in your guild hall you pick up for him considering how much you went to get through through it he better be su sufficiently grateful he probably won't be yeah i've never really had a good onion ring i should like quest for that all right olaf take the you give the takeout box to olaf who takes it from your hands with reverence. Ah, a grease-soaked repast to fill my manly arteries. In return, I give you this mighty talisman of good fortune. May it serve you well. Oh, interesting. While we're here. Okay. Oh, Dusky Alfred, it must be fate that conspires to bring us together at this time, for I have a request to make of you. A mighty task to test your mettle. I recently purchased an item of great powers from the mysterious forges of the seven-foot dwarves, but I have yet to receive it. The quest upon I which, the quest upon which I would have you embark is to infiltrate the subterranean factories of the dwarves, disguised as one of their own, and recover for me the item I seek. Uh, I'll pay you. Well, in that case, sure. All right. Fine with that. How goes the quest? Sure, whatever. All right. Let's check out the uh, lucky rabbit's foot. I'm guessing that it's a. Yep. This is a charm made from the foot of a rabbit which will supposedly bring you good luck. At this point, you're probably expecting me to comment it wasn't very lucky for the rabbit, but in fact, this particular la rabbit lives a long and happy life filled with good fortune, and his sudden death at the hands of gnomish key keychain makers prevented him from having to experience the whole horrible pain of death by bowel cancer. Also, his wife and bunnies made a huge packet on the life insurance. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, I have to give up one of these, though. Okay, well, this gives me regeneration and more meat. Whereas this gives me more meat and item drops. Urgh, that's tough. Well, we can also go to the Black Forest. Uh, yes, I want to go to the Blacksmith's Cottage. A shield? Hell yeah. Black shield. Let's head right back. Offhand items. Black shield. More muscle and more HP. This is a shield once worn by the Fierce Black Knight. I looked up. The damn Gina thing is a reference to uh, the movie The Black Knight. All right. Bonk. Tries to make a devil out of you by carving part of your thigh out and shaping it into a little devil figurine. Ow. Hannah Blackjack. More black eyeshadow. In a corpse that wouldn't would be idyllic if it was idyllic if it wasn't so dark. You find a church that would be so picturesque if it wasn't so sinister. You mark its location on your black map in case you ever want to go to a scary church for some reason. Like if Halloween falls on a Sunday, maybe. She tries to spin a web, but her... S oh, we're fighting a black widow. She tries to spin a web, but her spinnerets get clogged and she ends up tripping herself. By the way, a black widow and the spinnerets would be a killer name for a girl group. Hell yeah, it would. A mailbox up ahead stuffed with blackmail. You decide you don't want to be caught in some kind of blackmail scheme, so you leave it be. That's funny. Now the black pension check. Uh, at long last, you discover the trail leading to the black market. Frustrated that it took so long, you wonder why they didn't put up a sign. Then you remember what a black market is and realize that would have been a bad idea. All right, cool. We got the black market. Hello and welcome to the black market. As always, your discretion is appreciated nearly as much as your patronage is. For what illicit purposes may we exist you today? 500,000 meat for an exotic parrot egg. A red Zeppelin ticket. 
This is a ticket for one journey aboard the fabled Red Zeppelin, a luxury hotel from the sky where even a fall from a first story window is probably fatal. Oh, it deals in priceless diamonds. Interesting. This is the egg of a rare exotic pet it parrot, the sale of which has been banned in loathing due to it being an endangered species. Mainly they're endangered because people keep smuggling them into loathing to sell because they're so expensive. And they're so expensive because the sale has been banned in loathing. And so the circle of life continues. <laughs> this is a set of identification documents, boldly but falsely declaring you to be a person known as the Bramlet as Bramlet Abercrombie of 1742 Boris Boulevard, the right side of the track, Seaside Town. Kind of black paint. Red door syndrome. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a can of black paint. It's got lead in it, so it can't be so sold in normal stores because of the safety regulation. Stupid kids and their wall candy. <laughs> black paint. Oh no. Black face paint. This is a tin of black colored face paint. Oh, okay. Like a football player, you can dab some under your eyes to make yourself look meaner and tougher, but you'll have to walk slower to achieve the right effect. Okay, that's pretty good then. Black body spray. Like the radiation? This is a can of oddly scented body spray. You ask the black marketeer what it's made of, since the tag appears no useful information, but it a apparently a secret blend of old spices mixed in a vat with some sort of power stick. This stuff will make you smell incredibly noxious, but you get the feeling all the extra attention will make it hard to get anything useful done. Radiating black body. And then that's obviously a reference to Axe. All right, cool. Black sheepskin diploma. This is the skin of a black sheep that's been dried and turned into an official-looking parchment. Apparently, you're now a graduate of some university somewhere, though you can't read it's black on black. You're unsure since black on black is hard to read. It's probably some sort of wussy liberal arts degree. Anyway, would you like fries with that? That's funny. All right. We got Ford's identification documents. And then, well, we can also just go back to the distant woods and, yeah, make me a helm. He kicks you right in the state pancreas. I mean, pancreas. I want to get the last item from there, and then that can be the end of the episode. Okay, here we go. I would like pants. Black Reeves. All right. It's a helmet once worn with a fierce black knight. More HP. Way more HP. Wow. That's radical. Hmm. <laughs> then what? Then we need the pants. Here we are. Black Reeves. These Greaves so intimidating. Muscle plus 10. Wow. Oh, we get a little... <laughs> nice. I knew that, but it also still surprised me somehow. Radical. All right. Uh, that's probably a good end of the episode. Um, thanks for coming by. We completed two quests this time. Well, we technically completed a quest. And now we're doing something else. Take the identification documents. Hey, good thing I unlike the desert beach. It's almost like I read ahead. Um, thanks for coming by. I've been Alfred. This has been King of Loathing. Remember to play this game for yourself. I'm having a lot of fun, and I imagine most people would. Um, yeah, short episode, but, uh, thanks. <clears throat>